Welcome to Soccer we like it, the Man United direction. And today we're having the post-match analysis of the match between Manchester United and Atalanta. Atalanta 2, Manchester United 2. It seems Superman, the man with the cape, Cristiano Ronaldo, keeps carrying this club forward, refusing to agree the game is done by scoring winners after winners after winners. Today I'm joined with Vimal from UK. Vimal, welcome to the show, mate. Hey, Tim. How are you doing? Not too bad, mate. How's it going? You right? How's our little princess? She good? She's doing great. Yeah. She watched the game. She gave you her analysis. She she was she was angry at Ole. She started throwing her uh, her puree at the, at the screen. See? Ole, get the message. <laughs> Even the kids don't want you, mate. Even the kids don't <laughs> want you. So if the kids don't, want you, the adults definitely don't want you. So you yeah. saw the game yesterday. Um, it was a game United did it, could not afford to lose. If if if, mm. if, if that's where we are and. It was a game United had to get something, three points, one point, whatever it was, but they could not lose. As it started, Atalanta, United started on the, you know, they started positive, the three, five, three, two, everything looked good. Then, boom, you can see the goal. Talk mm. me through where, every, mm-hmm. where the wheel started to fall off. Yeah, well, I mean, it, they started off well, good tempo, good intensity, as they, as they did in the, the previous game. But then, you know, some, some players just lose concentration. They ball watch. And Atlanta find a way to break through because you know they they're so fluid. They like, are, you know when I watch them, are. it's like watching a little bit of City and Liverpool. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they move around like a swarm of bees around the players, and you it's difficult to mark them and track them. Yeah, and our players are just uh, getting a little bit confused. They don't know how to deal deal with that fluidity. And then you know a couple of passes leak through. Scott McTominay, I think there was a there was a deflection. He he kind of deflected the ball into a dangerous area and it was yes. picked up by the left wing. And um, there we go. Bang, goal. And De Gea obviously um, made a bit of a Could have done better, save. yeah. Could have done better, yeah. Because I think he, 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 he normally stops the ball with his feet and he's good at that. But this time he chose to dive and protect the ball with his, with his hands and body. And that's not his style, really. He's a good diver. I mean, he, you know, he can, he can dive for that ball, but right. I think he could have just used his feet. And and stopped it, so I think he, he messed up a little bit as well. But it was it was a number of errors. It wasn't just down to one single person. It was just the way we play. So when United considered the first goal, it was and where do you think was the pivotal change in United's momentum? Was it when Varane went off, or was it when United yeah. considered the goal first after starting on a high tempo? Yeah, I, I think I think that Varane does add a lot of solidity to that team. You know, he he is the the proper centre back that we have been missing, that we thought we were buying with Maguire, but we didn't. Varane is that guy that adds stability. He's, you know, you know when when you play football and you've got that calm, solid defender, mm-hmm. that you know, it's just going to clean up mm-hmm. and go to the right spots and right places and mug the right people. He has that. Maguire just has a lot of self-doubt he doesn't know where to go he's he's his positioning is off his balance is always off. off he might run one way and then fall over you know the guys you know awkward normally you have clearances per game or headers per game with Maguire it's falls per game <laughs> it should be a it's really game. sad though but you know it's and sad you people are wondering how how was he even made the United captain as soon as he got bought yeah was yeah. it because there were no leaders or was it because he was the England captain at the time? They just said, all right, let's just make it England, man out of There's no justification. He came from Leicester City where he wasn't a leader there. Yeah. He wasn't a captain there. So I don't get how he was made the yeah. captain. But this is Ole. I know. Well, it's Ole's, is he got his English? simple mind. Probably, yeah. Probably. He thinks that that's, that's the guy that's going to relay all the instructions. You know, rather than having a foreign-speaking captain who doesn't speak much English. Mm. You know, and but then Ollie's English isn't that good either. So, you know, in Ollie's simple mind, he's chosen we had him Valencia probably who, because he was who barely spoke English. I, I don't know how that Valencia, one yeah. yeah, I don't know how that yeah. one happened. Probably sign language. <laughs> <laughs> oh, an interpreter. I and mean, the funny thing, Valencia's one was really upsetting because he'd been there long enough. Yeah. To yeah, are you trying to tell me these guys can't personally hire a tutor to teach them? English. You're trying to tell them, oh, yeah. they just can't be asked. I think it just can't be asked. Yeah. I, I, I heard that they do have translators and they do have people that uh, help players along with their English. Mm. But um, yeah, I think some people just, 
have a real resistance to learning. You know, when you get later on, as you get age, age later on in life, you find it difficult to learn new languages. And I think for some of these guys, they just can't do it. Especially in an English-speaking country. He, he, because remember, yeah. Valencia had his, his, two of his kids were born in Manchester. Because remember, Valencia oh, was there from, Valencia, remember, Valencia was the replacement for Ronaldo from Wigan. 2009. Right. He was there for eight years, nine years. That's a long time. We should no learn English. Some English in that time. You know what I mean? That's what wow. I'm saying. Like, bro, I know you're from Ecuador, but come on, bro. Yeah. Maybe it's just not committed. It's, Maybe it's just, just bad with languages. Can't be, can't, just, can't be asked, mate. So we Maybe. have Maguire as the captain of this immense yeah. club. It takes a lot to be a captain. I mean, I don't, I won't even class Valencia as one of the a captain for now. He was just put there because he had he's been there the longest at the time. But Captain Material, yeah. he was not captain, mate. No, nah. definitely not. He will never. Who do you be think has top. been? Who, who, who do you think has been the best captain though that we've ever had? And who, who uh, in United the history, yeah, yeah, there are two guys that stand out in my mind. First, Brian yeah. Robson and Roy Keane. Yeah. Then Roy Keane. Uh, then after Roy Keane, I'm going with yeah. Vidic. Vidic. What about Ferdinand? Ferdinand was never a captain. Ferdinand was more like a deputy captain, or um, he, he wasn't ever. He only captained. When you, uh, um, Vidic wasn't there, he was like a, assistant captain, but a lead, he was a leader on the pitch. He was a leader, a captain. Yeah. 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 So a Cantona, hey. a Cantona captain United, but he was more like a do what I do. Inspirational. Yes. Follow my lead yeah. and we'll do well. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what Ronaldo is, isn't he? He's right. an inspirational well, Ronaldo leader. Ronaldo will be in your face like, you know what? This ain't working. You need to. Cantona doesn't say anything. He just changed up. And see how I scored the winning goal? You do mm. the same. But Ronaldo's mm. more like, you know what? He shows his frustration like, this is, this is not right. This is effed up. This is not right. This is not right. He, but Keane would be yeah. right there in your face, cursing out Schmeichel. Yeah. Uh, Schmeichel wasn't a bad captain as well, because he remember he captained the team in the Champions League final in 99. Yeah. Uh, he he yeah. was crazy as well. But you could see Keane and him going at each other. King cursing at Neville for why did the guy get through that that wing? King was verbal. Brown Robson was verbal. Yeah. They led from the yeah. middle. They drove the team right. when the team was down. That that was, that was different. Yeah. Those are my two favorite, the best cat. I think they, they are the best yeah. cats United's ever had in the history. I and agree. agree. Keane, Keane will be in your face. People will be scared to underperform because they know yeah. they're going to get a grilling from Keane. Yeah. 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 Skull said it. Skull said in an interview like, it was also a privilege mm. to know King was in your team because mm. you know he had your back. Because remember mm. that Vieira King thing in the tunnel before the game even started? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, Neville yeah. was running his mouth and they told him off and King went off on, <laughs> on Vieira, you know? Right, right, yeah. yeah. In the tunnel, said, or as yeah, they were leaving the tunnel. Before yeah, they st- the game started, they had even started the yeah, match. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. The old hybrid tunnel was... was so tight and small, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are proper battles, huh? Oh, yeah. The, Nowadays, the, it's all hugging and smiling. Like that's Pogba what Kenny's does. saying. That's what Kenny's mm. saying. That back in the day, you know you're going to war. You're not hanging out, sharing shirts and chilling out. Yeah. And hanging out and like, you know, we're all crew. He said, no. We are going to war. You are not my friend. Yeah. On As yeah. long as this line is war. Even if we're in the same country, we play for the same country, but this night to is but now this is the thing, you know, isn't it? It just makes me wonder what the hell goes through Pogba's mind for him to behave like that. You know, for him to be such a, he a, has a you know a figurehead for 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 the you know for France for for the whole of Africa. You know, he, he's he's such a figurehead, but then he just acts like such a clown sometimes. He doesn't there seem was to take poor. the football yes, seriously. Poor. Yes, there was poor. I think remember the game against Atalanta. He was one of the people who inspired that game, that that comeback. But yesterday was a complete opposite. He nearly lost us the game. I mean, dribbling towards your goal and you have two Atlanta players yeah. on you. If yeah. not Bayi intercepted that, it could have yeah. been something different. And Bayi was, he was immense yesterday, mate. How did you see him in that? You know, brilliant. Defense? Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, when Bayi plays, I think this guy is, this guy gives his all, you know. He reminds me of a Vidic when he, this guy would put his body on the line. On and the he line. literally did. There was one clip where he dived to save, uh, to make an interception. And he made this clearance. Maguire, 
he would have fallen down 20 meters before. You saw him at the, 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 the Atlanta second goal. What? Oh my God. He to even get the ball. He's, 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 he's trying, yeah, he's putting his hand up trying to play offside. Well, yeah. Why are you putting your hand up, man? You know, you stay in line with the other two defenders if you're playing a back three. Um, he hasn't done that. He's then tried to put his hand up, say, oh, he's offside. And he had a shorter distance to get back than the uh, Duvan or whatever yeah, his name yeah. was. Yeah. I think he had 31 yards to get back, Duvan. Yeah, to, and he, to even, he still couldn't get the guy. And uh, Maguire had 13 yards. So he's just he's just failing in every department. Um, I don't even think you know, this guy is 100% free. If you don't, I, I don't think he is. I think he's just been pushed there. And Ole's like, I'd rather have a half fit. Maguire than a no a, a no a, a fully free Maguire if he's not if he's ready and that is, look at yeah. I think Varane was rushed look at where we are again now see this yeah we're stuffed now isn't it now we've lost Varane again he's a, he's and a four weeks back. yeah now it's, and, he um, won't be ready for the Chelsea game yeah and with uh, this article being released today that Maguire is feeling the strain of Man United captaincy he feels that uh, that uh, the captaincy through such turbulent times is weighing heavy on heavy on Harry Maguire. And that is explaining his loss of form. So this is what sources have told uh, Metro, which is a, a newspaper yeah. in the UK. And um, he's saying he struggles from return from injury last month and looks a shadow of the defender that the Red Devils made the most expensive fee, uh, of all time in 2019. He's a shadow of himself. I mean, he played good in you know the Euros. Yeah, he was a real leader there, but he, he just seems to, to struggle with us. Yeah, maybe Maybe he's just telling us or telling everyone that, look, he doesn't want to remain captain at the moment. He needs to focus on his defending, focus on his centre-back duties and get back to form. You know, do the basics right. Then then worry about a captaincy. I think the captaincy should go to someone in central midfield, you know, because that's effectively where it's worked. You know, Bruno, in the past. Who would you recommend and, and, Bruno? And Bruno? Bruno, for me, has always been a real captain. You know, this, this guy is a vocal person. He's He is the number one creator in that midfield. You know, the way he pings Brown the ball, the way he just uh, links up with Ronaldo, Ronaldo it's magical. Yeah. So he's an inspirational, and he's a vocal person. He speaks good oh, English. Yeah. He knows you how saw to what he did. He, he knows what, remember what players need to do. The game against uh, Sevilla semi-final, when Lindelof yeah. messed up that low cross, you saw he was yeah. in his face. Had a go. And Lindelof was telling to F off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, whereas Lindelof if didn't want Bruno was truth. captain, yeah, and if Bruno was captain, then Lindelof wouldn't be able to speak to him in that way. No, oh, no. Oh, hell no. I'd probably get slapped. Because he, <laughs> because yeah, Bruno because he was is the pissed. captain. Yeah, so, you know, Oli, Oli just needs to wake up and smell the coffee, man. You know, he's got he's got a much better play in midfield who can, who can dictate games. So he should be given the captaincy and let Ronaldo do his thing. Right. As it stands, with that game yesterday, the defence of that, that w- 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 it seems like when the injury came, he, he, Ole reverted back to what he's used to. He re- reverted mm. to back four. Yeah. At that time, do you think it got worse or it got better for United defensively? I think it got worse. I get worse. It gets, it gets worse because what we're happening is that we're just, we're, we're again playing too deep. And when we're playing too deep, you're going to invite the other team to, yes. to have possession and attack us. And that's when we come under pressure. You know, why not Why not uh, balance the game in midfield, take hold of the game in midfield and put pressure on them? When you start playing with a back four, back five, you know what's going to happen. Yeah, you're going to, you're going to just invite too much pressure and then you're going to make mistakes. You're going to capitulate. Yeah. And that's what always happens. Happens. Do you think Rashford... And Mason played well enough. What do you think happened to Rafa? Because he was just gone missing yeah. yesterday. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Him to and him. Ronaldo were trying. a bit too far apart. Too far apart. That's correct. You know, there's there's not that strike partnership that you you expect to see from from those two guys. So I think mm-hmm. they need to learn. Cavani Cavani links up well with Ronaldo. Bruno it has this kind of like magical kind of connection with Ronaldo. You know, the back pass for the first goal mm. to lay off. To Ronaldo, it was just it was magical, and and uh, Mason Greenwood was part of that. You know, Mason Greenwood, thankfully for once, he just did a one-touch pass. Yes, he didn't try to take the ball and dribble and you know mm. head down and all this mm. stuff. He he was in tune with Ronaldo and Bruno, in that there was a move taking place. It took place in a split second. It was it was instinct. 
Bruno sends the ball to Ronaldo. Ronaldo lays it off to Mason. By the time Ronaldo would receive that ball in the middle, Bruno had already made his run. And luckily, instinct got into Mason's brain and he passed it. He made that pass. Right. So it was, it was fantastic. And I'm glad he's doing that. He's got to learn to do that one-touch passing. And he's got to learn to look up and look at the players. He's, he's just, you know, he loves to get... He loves to just dribble and run at players and he often just runs out of steam or he runs into traffic. Yep, yep. He needs to learn to look up, read the game. Where are my buddies? Where's my team? And he did that. He did that. And, and that's what got us that first goal. So it's brilliant. Ronaldo, Bruno, they know how to do this. You know, right. these guys are true professionals, world-class players. They know how this works. So Bruno, uh, Mason needs to learn this and I think Rashford needs to learn this as well. And Rashford needs to realise Running that Premier League players into space in Champions League kind of it's slightly mm -hmm. different, mate. They ain't gonna give that space yeah. to be running, sprinting oh. into. This is not the Premier League. It's different, yeah. you know. Whereby you have acres, just all right, catch me if you can mentality. Mm -mm. Champions mm -hmm. League is yeah. much tight. You know, you have very little space to make those dash runs. And when Rashford yeah. always needs space to run into, if not his space, his game is kind of mm, he struggles a bit. Yeah. Rashford's game is pace. That mm. guy can sprint. He's fast. Mm. I think when mm. they recorded him, he ran up 20, 21 miles per hour mm. last season or, or pr prior to that. So his game is that he needs to hang off the, the last person um, when, when, when they've soaked up a lot of pressure. So mm. the game that the team is playing deep, it, the opposition is attacking us and we're in our final third. Rashford has to stay on that last shoulder of that player and right. then wait for one of our players to pick up the ball and then bang. He will go running and then someone will make that that pass. Usually it's a Pogba or Bruno and, you know, Rush will run onto that ball. That's his game. His game is all about speed. He's not the right. dribbler. You know, right. he's, got, he's got a good shot. He's mm. got a good shot. He can place that ball. Mason has got an amazing strike, two-footed striker. Uh, he's got pace as well, but he lacks, I think, the intelligent gameplay that some other players have. He doesn't seem to know when to go. He doesn't know, seem to know when to run. Right. He doesn't seem to know when to press. He's, 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 I think it was in the, I don't know which game it was. I think it might have been Liverpool, the first goal. He pressed at the wrong time, right. which then opened up a massive space behind him. Behind him. At that point, Ryan Bissaka had to go and cover, and the whole defence became lopsided. So Maguire had to then go to where Ryan Bissaka was. Shaw had to go with where um, Maguire was. And then that whole left right space became vacant. And that's where the first goal came in. It was yeah, a vacant space. I remember yeah, because Shaw sure. was ended up being... Is that everybody got drawn towards the, le the yeah. Liverpool's left, our right. Our and right, that's correct. Shaw was left there. Yeah. I saw Shaw yeah. when they did a still frame. He was there for Liverpool players by himself. Like, yeah. wow, mm. ouch. Talk about defending, yeah. bro. Ah, it's so poor. So it, yeah. So the thing is, it started with Mason. Mason should not have pressed at that point because there was no way no, of no way. stopping that, that, that or intercepting. So he had made the wrong decision. What he should have done, he should have held his ground and he should have tried to predict where this runner is going to go mm. and try to track him at least. By him running, he just took himself out of the game and the whole defense became lopsided. So it's that lack of awareness, that lack of football intelligence, which he needs to really work on. And I don't know how you teach that. Maybe it's through experience, or maybe he's just got to start studying games and watching games, or maybe he needs a so, coach mate. to teach him to do that. Which kind maybe of coach, coach would be that? What coach would be that? Uh, McKenna? Yeah, someone like Tuchel. Oh. <laughs> Tuchel. No. None of them. None of them. None of our current setup will have the ability to teach Not him even Carrick. <laughs> Not Carrick. Carrick can't even teach Fred or McTominay to play a you know become a world class CDM. This is what I'm saying. That so, was poor though. That is from yeah. Carrick. I'm disappointed. But hey, it's either you yeah. know or you don't know. It is let's not yeah. Players who were great doesn't mean they can make good managers as well, you know. So I've learned I've come to understand learn that that if you're a great player, yeah. it doesn't mean you're gonna be a great manager as well. So phew. so yeah. with Ronaldo's carrying United single handedly, or mm -hmm. he has scored five goals in the four Champions League games United have played. How much more can Ronaldo keep doing for United at this moment in the season? The season he is can't. too long. He can't, man. It's like, it's like driving a car, you know, in 6,000 revs all the time and you're going to mm. like, eventually burn it out. You're going to blow up the gearbox. You're going to blow the up the engine. Clutch. You know, your clutch. You know, we, you're just pushing, pushing, pushing too hard and relying on one person. You know, he's, we're going to, 
Ronaldo is a serial winner. He does not like to lose. He knows that his his boss is under fire, but he's playing to keep us in the Champions League because that's what he wants. He wants to go progress further in Champions League, and he's doing it for that reason alone. I don't, he's not doing it to save Oli. So the so. fact is that no, and and so the thing is because because we you know we have such a crappy system, and and we cannot control games in midfield with the players we have. It's it's causing our team to to capitulate so many times again, again after again. again. I, I, I made a, a mistake the other day. I said that Manchester United was worth around two billion. I actually looked it up. They're worth four and a half billion. Wow. Compared to Atalanta, which is 136, 139 million. I mean, we're like absolutely four times colossal giant. Ten times worth. More. Ten, more than yeah. That. It's you know the value of our team. We're we, you know we are. It's like you know, Mercedes competing against... Ford know, Fiesta, mate. Citron, remember, not um, even that, you know, remember the Fiat Uno? Remember the Fiat Pandas? Fiat Uno, yeah. It's like top of the range. It's like a Ferrari competing against a uh, Fiat Uno. Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. Completely. The club of our size is, is being run by amateurs. It seems so. So, we've... Poached by amateurs. We've yeah. united... At this stage, now next two games are Villarreal away and uh, Young Boys at home. Oh. That's six points available. United yeah. need four, if they can get four. How many points can United get for the next two Champions League games? We we just need one away win, don't we? Yeah, I think that's all we need. Three points. So our that's next game is against Villarreal. Villarreal. And I think Emery's leaving. Isn't without... Isn't Emery leaving to go. Yeah, to, they can. Um, they're going to be without Unai. Has he left? Yeah, that's right. I think it's almost a done deal. Yeah, I'm too much. Too much. I'm quite surprised about that. I thought, yeah. you know, you know, with Newcastle being the richest club in the Premier League, I thought they would have gone for something, something better. I think they're going to use him as really... a starter manager for the new new yeah, generation. I'm, I think they'll start I'm getting really getting shocked. Started. I'm really shocked because I, you know, I think maybe an Antonio Conte would have been more suitable for them. But I wonder but, why he will leave a team in Champions League and go fight. Is it the money to go and beat with a oh, team that's fighting relegation probably. in Premier League? Or is he trying to prove a point I mean, that he, he, he failed at Arsenal? Well, this is the thing. He struggled at Arsenal. Mm. He really did, didn't he? Yeah. You know, he was very unpopular. So it's a very really strange choice for him to, to go to Newcastle. They ain't got the a lot of players. If, if, no, great players, bro, no, to work with. no. But there's going to be probably a massive spending spree in January. January. I don't know what financial fair play says. You know, are there limitations as to how much they can spend on what they can spend on? I don't know. But there's going to be a lot of spending. And I think Marshall's going to be on his way out. I think potentially we could sell Lingard to them. Who else? Phil Jones, maybe. They might need a centre back. <laughs> Phil Jones. Uh, Ole so, said Phil Jones has a role to play this season. I'm thinking. What season hmm. does that mean? And what games are we talking? Because I don't see any games Phil Jones needs to be involved in this season, mate. I just don't see any. Yeah. Because we are at the point now whereby we can't afford to be trying players or for emotional, sentimental situations. No, 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 no. No, we're already behind. This is not the time to like, all right, he's been a great servant. <laughs> you're playing, like as Ferguson said, you play your best team, not, you know, He's been there. Let's try him for this. Too. No, 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 no. This, ain't, this is not the time for all that. That time's passed. Carabao Cup, you would have done that, but you even didn't even do that. So, no, as it is. Do you know now, how old he is? Phil Jones. He's about late 20s. Yeah. He's not old. He's not old. He's, he's a year older than Maguire and Varane. Varane and yeah. Maguire, 28. He's 29 years old. Yeah, he's been there a long time. He joined in 2010, I think. Wow. Yeah, he joined, he joined in 2010 or 2011. He won a league title. I think he won two league titles, 2011 and 2013. The Fergie, yeah. Mm. Yeah. He's been there just he as long as... such a fall from grace? What, is it because he's such a... He fumbles a lot, but then... What, he fumbles what a lot. He does the same. But remember, he had the partnership with uh, Smallins under Smalling. Mourinho. Mm. Smalling was the better one out of the two. So it, we, we, there was yes. a, the, what, what, what were they called? There was a term they called them the British press or the British United fans. Um, damn, it was a funny, um, it was a funny term nickname for uh, Jones and Smallings then. 
I can't remember. I can't remember. The uh, the something um, the something brothers. Oh shit! What's it called? Chuckle. The Chuckle Brothers. Chuckle Brothers. Yes. Ah, that comedy duo. That was them two. Them two were terrible. Uh, but Jones was the worst one. He scored seven terrible. goals in his United career. Six own goals, one <laughs> regular goal. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> this yeah. is this is that's his career so far. But he's been so he's always injured, mate. He's always always injured. injured. Yeah. And Ole was saying, I know what it's like to come from injuries from for a knee. Real Ferdinand should not mm. has no right to tell him why he should be in the club. You know, he was kind of covering for Jones, which I get. Real was just saying, Why is Jones still at the club? Why is he still there? Mm. You know, yeah. he hasn't played since 2019 December. That's nearly two years, bro. I know. It's just, uh, you know, what what is he doing? Is he supposed to be? Is he playing as opposition to the first team? You know, in training, what's his purpose there? Maybe yeah, he's one. His his motivation, motivating the young players. Come on, you could do it. You could do it. You could do it. You know, I've been there. I've won a league title. I know what it's like to be in a pressure environment. Yeah, right. And he earns two point six million pounds a year. Yeah, he's on. Uh, he's now on about. He's not. On, he's not one of the high earners in United. He's on about one twenty. No, he's not. But two point six million. Yeah, for well, we for take that. for 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 doing nothing, for not even coming on as a sub, just sitting on a bench, mm. just coming to train and play play some some training games. And I feel for him at gym. times. Then at times, I think he should have been he should have been so long time ago. Honestly, yes, yeah, yeah. you know, he sometimes have, he could have had a career at another club. You know, he does. He has that passion, you know, whereby you you, he you know he puts his, he does put his body on the line. That's one guy I would he say. He does, you know. Yeah, but he's just more than a good footballer. He's just not a good no. footballer, mate. Decision making is bad. Oh, yeah, very bad decision making. But yeah, you're right; yeah. he's so committed. The guy will, you know, literally throw his face in front of a ball just to mm. save it. Mm. You know, he's willing to be battered and yeah, yeah, bruised, yeah. bruised. Yeah, he's got that commitment, but oh, he just, just decision making is bad. Just in fact, poor, that's mate. what Bayi does. Bayi does that as well, doesn't he? He's he's yeah. quite athletic as well. Yeah, with his interceptions. Yeah. So. Now James. that United, mm. we got City on Saturday. Mm. Does Ole go back to three five two, or he sticks with the what, four three three? Well, I think without without Varane, can this three at the back handle it? You know, what bringing in Telles would that help? Sit, yeah, I, I'd love to see Telles play. I think it's brilliant. I always, I've always liked the way Teller's plays because his his first intention is to get that ball forward and whip that ball in, and he's got an amazing whip of the ball. You know, such such deadly pace. I mean, you've seen that. You also saw that goal that he scored. Was it? I don't know which game it was. Uh, Villarreal. Um, Villarreal. Yeah, the ball just came down. It was outside the box, and it was first it was time volley. volley. And it, first time volley. It was absolutely brilliant. He's, he can strike that ball pretty amazingly, much better than what, what Shaw can do. Yeah, uh, Shaw always gets the, gets the better of him in terms of starting birth. So I don't know why Tellez, what Oli's problem is with Tellez to, to keep him out and not play him because I think, he's, I think he's very potent going forward. Very, very potent going forward. He's not as built as, as Shaw, sure. but he's definitely got more pace. Shaw yes. is a little bit more stockier, Ducky. so he can yeah. you know, barge the player. But but Tellers is fast. Remember, Evra wasn't and the he's... biggest player. Evra was quick, but Evra no. yeah. was very smart. Evra was a good footballer. There's also that very good. being a good footballer as well. You yeah, know? yeah. But Tellers is that. Tellers is a good footballer. He, yes. I think he offers a lot. He does. For him but to just get sidelined. Not utilized. Only yeah. Once sure. Only when Shaw's injured, Tellers comes see, in. Yeah. Whereas you see with Pep, he would rotate these players around, keep everyone interested, mm, everyone motivated. Mm, 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 mm. It's, you know, and if you have a bad, even Tuchel does the same. If you have a bad game, you go to the bench and your number two gets a, gets a spot. Yeah, yeah. Luke Shaw does have bad games, but and he still he doesn't still get played. Benched. No, this is the problem. So you see, when you have players who are, so it's like there's always going to be players who are fresh. Not He hasn't played 10 games. Now you want him to play the high level when you just bring him on. No. But you see, like Tuchel and Pep, they bring players, they rotate them regularly. So they're always playing. These ones mm. that, you know, Lingard will play one, two games, one play for the next five games. Van der Beek will play five minutes, one play another for another six games. That is, it, it's not right. You know, his yeah. rotation is so bad. See the talent on, so that, on that bench. And look at what he's putting out. 
that he's not and you, uh, this guy is yeah just... and and you know you know they say a lot of people say that Oli and his coaching team are learning on the job i don't even think Oli's learning because if you watch the way Tuchel sets up his team and the way he rotates the squad and the way Pep rotates the squad, you know, they did this yesterday in the, in the Champions League that um, you don't play well, you get to the bench and you're, you're number two. There's, there's, there's two positions, mm. two players for every single position. Yeah. You don't play well, your number two gets in and mm. then you become the number one and it keeps rotating like that. Yeah. And so everyone is hungry. I've got to perform. If I get a starting 11, I have to perform. I have to work my socks off. And that's how you keep ever motivated and you have such a strong team. You've effectively got 25, 26 strong players in that squad who are desperate to play. And Tuchel knows how to deploy his teams. He knows how to change his formation around to, uh, to adjust to the opposition. And he does it. He, he reads it quickly. And so... We, we see this just from, from what we are seeing on the television, from watching mm. the game, mm. from, from watching the highlights and stuff like that. Oli has the same material, but more yeah. to yeah. learn from. Yeah. And he's not learning. Mm-mm. That's, but, the, so that's is, the revelation. This he's is, not even this learning is where we are. Job. This is where we are. This is where we are. And as you can see, it, it, uh, you know, there's a saying, everything comes out in the wash. Everything, you, you could do what you, you, you could... Fake for so much, but everything's gonna come out in the wash. Everyone's yeah. gonna be seen. Yeah. Like, you know what? What yeah. are you are guys actually doing in the training ground? Because we don't see it. Yeah. You're saying, yeah. "Here we go again," and all that nonsense and malarkey. Yeah. But it, it doesn't show on the field. Yeah. So we've. I have watched. Point... I have watched one. I have watched one of the uh, the training videos, by the way. Mm. So I think there was a, there was a camera set up at Carrington, mm. just watching their training program. Mm. So. Um, I think Carrick and McKenna were taking that and Ollie just stands on the side, just watching, just smiling, crossing his hands and not, no speaking, no talking, nothing, which I find really bizarre. It's extremely quiet. And then the guys are just doing little drills, you know, running from here to here, dribbling with the ball, players getting into a circle, playing pig in the middle. And I just thought to myself, no one, none of the coaches are actually speaking. They're just letting them do their drills, the same old drills every single day. So where's where's this tactic? Where's this strategy talking? Where's where's this system being implemented? How who's communicating what? Is Eric Ram did that? The set piece goal, do you see him around? No, I didn't no, I think this is before he joined, but right. it's it's quite insightful watching them train because it's just like watching some some Sunday league football team wow. just getting in the park, putting a little cone, a few right, cones down, right, a few right. flags, run from here to here, dribble the ball from here to here, play pig in the middle. And and the coaches are not really communicating. Mm-mm. So they, either they don't know how to communicate, or there's no message to give. Did you remember what this guy said when he signed? I know he maybe he might be saying it out of spite. Sanchez said the minute he joined United, his first training session, he called the man his agent. Is it too late to cancel my contract? Because he saw this level. That true? <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we read it. But whether he said it out of spite to Ole, because he, he despised Ole because Ole offloaded him. Remember, that guy's got five goals in 44 games. Five goals in yeah, 45 I, games. I think, I think it's very revealing. I think it's probably true because we're seeing this. We're seeing, we're seeing you know, the deployment of their coaching, of their, of their system, whatever it is. Maybe and this was with the same coaching crew. It. This is with the McKenna. Yeah. Plus, yeah. Remember, he came from Marino's team into Ole's team. And he said, nah, he he can't do this. He doesn't know why. Sanchez. Yeah. The training is so poor. It's it's just being given to a bunch of cowboys, isn't it? It is, it is. The coaching was handing over to Ole. Cowboys. So as we stand now, do you see United coming out of this group, though? Can you still see United? Because remember, the last time we were in this position, we needed one point from three games, and we yeah. fucked that up. Do you, can you we, see we United just needed one point. That's right. You know, I think, um, you know, once bit and twice shy, I think I think we need three points from, from how many games have we got left? Only two. two. Yeah. Home so and we need home. three points from two games. I, I think Ronaldo is not going to allow us to, to drop out. We, the way we dropped out last time was just absolutely stupid. I mean, just a single point was all we needed. Mm. 
I don't think Ronaldo and Bruno, the likes of those guys, I think those are the real leaders. I don't think they'll allow it. Um, our problems lie with that defence and deep lying midfield. That's where we're really, really struggling. So I think I think the guys, I think Ronaldo and Bruno will take leadership in that dressing room and say, guys, you know, we just need to get this win and we're over the line. Let's do it. Right. So I think those guys are going to pull that team across the finishing line. Right. And you know, once you get over the finishing line, it's straight knockout. Yeah. There's no more three points. It's straight knockout. And we're dealing yeah. better quality outside the knockout stages now. Once you get to the knockout yeah. stage, it's straight. Yeah. You, you, you don't win your way. I was wondering, has that new rule been implemented yet? The uh, away goals rule that they want to this, they want to remove completely. Has it is it been enforced this season? Do you know? No, you know, I don't know. You know, UEFA said know. they want to scrap that. You know, away win, away, uh, f- uh, away, uh, yeah, away goal I, advantage. Yeah, I heard about that because of the because of COVID and the, the fact that there's no real crowd. There's no crowds there. Mm. You know, so there's no real advantage um, where you play. I'm not sure. To be honest, it's a good question. You know, whereby if you score yeah. one goal away, that counts as double and it helps you to go. So teams yeah. will just go try and just get the one away goal. And they said it's not helping football develop. Like, oh, God. Yeah. I think it'd be good if it was scrapped. Because, you know, each game is going to be home and away. You know, why not just level it out? Mm. You mm. Know, let, it, let it be on, on, on goals and goal difference. You know, not it's on. a way, a waypoint rule. It just complicates it more than it needs to be. So I think, right. yeah. Because it's been it around for a long time. That rule has been around for a very long time, yeah. hasn't it? The away yeah. goal rule. Yeah. Right. Because it doesn't apply in the Premier League in other competition, does it? Mm-mm. Don't. Mm-mm. As far as I know, it doesn't. Right. Well, it so, definitely does not apply in the Premier League. So yeah, why not do away with it? Any predictions against City on Saturday? Um. <laughs> what do you, what Tough can one, you yeah. see happening? I think, you see, the thing is, I think um, I think City know that, you know, this three-game stipulation is not uh, probably not going to be fully enforced. Oh, no. Oh, and no. I think that Oli's going to stay. So whereas some people are saying, yes, let's Man United win so we can keep Oli at the helm so we can just batter them every time we see them, I think City realise that it's just all a bit of a sham. So I think they will come out and they'll give us a good game and they'll probably thrash us. It won't be a 5-0 like Liverpool did. I think it's going to be something like a 3-1 to City because they can do it. I think they are the most yeah. dangerous team in the Premier League. Yeah. But the style of their style of football is just basically choke you. You know they did lose a home to Palace over the weekend. Yeah, that was, that was, that was surprising. That was surprising. I, I think it's because Chale, uh, Palace are quite a strong physical team. Under City Vieira. are, yeah, under Vera, and you know he's a, he's a, he's, a, he's a tough guy like oh like, yeah like Keen. like Keen, yeah, and City you know it's they're all sh- short, small, and nimble players because that's that's Pep style, so I think maybe they bullied them a little bit, maybe they just got a bit physical with them, mm. you know, you come and get the and ball, they had ten men, they the were way. a god player sent off, yeah, 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 Diaz, yeah, he he's, not, he's not he's not he's not playing against United, he won't be yeah, playing but then United. they've got. Uh, they got Nathan Nake, who doesn't really get played. They much. got the and British guy. Got, what's his name? Um, um, Stones. Stones. And Laporte. Yeah, I so think they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Whether United play about... Ronaldo and Cavani is another thing. Yeah, well, I, I can see him playing Radford on the left, Ronaldo in the middle, Mason on the right. I could just yeah. see that front three. I can't see Sancho. We all said this thing that Sancho wasn't going to start today's yesterday's game, and he didn't. And he didn't. he didn't. Yeah, surprising, because he 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 did he did change the game when he came on. You know, he was he was direct. He gets that ball. He holds onto it. He dribbles. He runs at players. You know, he causes the opposition to panic. So he does actually affect the game in a positive way. Yeah, I think he should play. He should start. Well, we will just have you know, to see what happens on Saturday. It's, it's an early game. That's yeah. a five thirty game. No, that's um, 12 o'clock for you guys. It's 7.30 for us. So that is uh, 11.30 a.m. for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be a good game. And that's on Saturday, is it? Yeah. Let's have a look. Saturday, yeah. 11.30 for you. No, 12.30 for you. 12.30. 12.30. Should be a good game. 
That's Old Trafford. Yeah, you're right. 12, 1230. Yeah. Yeah. It's 7.30am for us. Um, we've not been doing well. well what's home. your thoughts? What do you think is going to happen? I, I think <laughs> I could see a draw. I, I can't see us being City. I, I a feel draw. Our home, our home, we struggle at home in the Premier League. We really struggle. It's like we, yeah. we feel that immense pressure to win and we end up defending and cracking under immense pressure and making defensive blunders. So think about the games at home. Everton, Villa, we've really struggled. Mm. Yeah. Ronaldo's build us out in the two Champions League games at home. Yeah. You know? So Premier League, we are not doing great at home and home is your bread and butter. No. That's where you get your three points. Yeah. But we are dropping more points at home than away. That's my concern. Really? The Liverpool game, I don't really? want to discuss that. We got hammered. That is not even discussable. That was just hammered. No. Then no. I just hope City don't... So I see a draw. I, I see a draw. I don't see a win. I yeah. see a draw. If we win, it will be one of those games whereby we fluked it again and Ole's, you know, a master... Is a, he has a master plan. He's, you know, he knows how to be City. He's got City's number and all that malarkey that comes with it. But no, I don't doesn't. see us... I, I, I just see it as... You know, he's able, he, he, you, you beat City twice or three times in a season and you end up achieving literally nothing, no trophies to show for it. Mm. So mm -hmm. it's like, really? So what was the point? What was the point? You still do you, do you get the City? feeling? Do you get the feeling that he flukes? When he gets a win, do you feel he flukes it? It's not down to tactical. I think he flukes it. Else. I think he flukes it. I think he flukes it down to um, pure individual individuality individuality yeah. from players. I think that's what gets him through yeah. the game. And he hopes they always pull that thing out because he knows the quality on that team. He knows the quality of players. They're good mm. enough to pull out a rabbit out of a hat. That's why yeah. he always believes. But if he was managing an average team, oh boy, they would be in relegation. I swear, relegation yeah. right now. Yeah. Because they were, they were, there's no individuality to perform. But you have Ronaldo at the helm. You have Sanchez. Look at the quality there. You have quality. Amazing quality. Amazing quality. So Pog won a great on a, I feel so... on a good day. So you have all the tools. There's just no, you know, so there's no reason why you're not, you're not performing. There's no reason very why you shouldn't be a bit closer to Chelsea on the table. Yeah. If we beat City, yeah. you're, you're, you're sitting on the same points, you know? Yeah, and I feel I feel I do really feel disappointed that uh, Conte's gone to Spurs because I think I think well, he would have had of a really great impact on are, us. Are so disappointed that um, people are saying why didn't he wait? He can't wait because United never approached him. It's, they it's, never it, made contact. They, they never made yeah. contact. The press, uh, United put that spin like, oh, they're talking to him to get the fans because United is the biggest social media uh, club being followed in the world by fans, Man United. Mm, and mm, the, mm. the more clicks and research is the more money to the Glazers' pockets because of subscriptions and all that and everyone clicking and clicking and clicking and joining and all, all sorts of things on social media. But they never mm. approached Conti. So yeah. why, what is he waiting it's, for? It's like They've Fabrizio said, was a spokesperson for that. Mm, exactly. So, Did you see? Yeah. Think about it. Why should he wait? Wait for what? There's nothing coming because they're sticking with that yeah. guy. They've made it clear. Think about it. He gets through these three games. Then they give him another three games. So it is like just toying with the fans' emotions. And MUTV, who, you know, said, if United get through these three games, the pressure's off. Really? This season is long. You can't be the pressure can't be off. It make it sound yeah, like... You see that that yeah. mentality of thinking. But what does that mean? Get through three games. Does that mean three, like you know, two wins and a loss, three draws? As far as he doesn't lose losses, all three what, games. What's I the think, stipulation? Far, I think if you lost the Spurs game, lost Atlanta game, then pressure's on. I don't think I could not. Yeah. I still don't see them firing Ole. I still don't. For right. them to fire Ole, mathematically United should be would not cannot go and fire for top four will be out of the Champions League. They've got to lose like probably seven straight games on a bounce. And I mean, on a bounce. Yeah. They have yeah. to say, you know, this guy has got to go because the pressure from the fans, yeah. like, you know, this stuff. But if he was another manager, you know, he's gone. He'll yeah. be gone. But so we've got, given we've got a extra. win. Extra. He's just so given a win so and a draw. Lines. Yeah. We've got, got a win and a draw. draw. So if he loses, then he hasn't done too badly, right? No, he game. hasn't. And they'll say, oh, it's against a big team like City. So he's yeah. he's, he's been yeah. given, you know, whereby I just keep giving someone excuses, you know, giving time. Yes. He's doing well. See what he achieved. 
he did came from third position but now second so there is progression when everything's just based on it just covering over the cracks uh, uh, paul merson yeah. said something he said oh, i think i still have it up do i have it up still paul merson said something yesterday on sky sports i know merson he, he's not the one to say the best because he wasn't he, he was he was a good player back in his day for arsenal that, that george graham side he was a very talented player yeah. He just yeah. had a, a, a yeah, this drinking problem. Yeah, a lot of those guys did because that was the culture back then. Wasn't right. It? He, yeah. M- uh, what, this is what uh, he said. Cristiano Ronaldo, phenomenal in saving United again, but the result papers over the cracks, says Paul Merson. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and he's got his spot on. And it's, it's good that, you know, players from other clubs you can know, see it. They they come, yeah, I mean, they're coming out and saying, saying stuff, which is, which is in our favour. You know, like um, Carragher and Crouch. Oh, Carragher and... is, is, is being, I, I like him. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of him, but what he said, what Gary Neville can't true. say, he's saying what Gary Neville can't yeah. say. And Gary Neville keeps making yeah. excuses, yeah. blaming the players. Yeah. No, it ain't the players. The players play to instruction. If the instructions are yeah. bad, you will get bad results. It's so that simple. Yeah. Yeah. So then this probably is, is almost negative spin against the MUFC PR machine because oh, the yeah. PR machine is basically spinning it in such a way to protect Oli and yeah. his clowns. Whereas these guys from other clubs, they've got no loyalty to no, us no. or to the MUFC PR there machine. You go. So they can that's say right. what they want. Exactly. And that's that is going to be like a uh, negative pol- political spin to that, well, to that machine. So well, they will make they you can't realize control it. They can't they, contain it. They can't. But they want you to realize, yeah. oh, they know they don't know about United football. What they know is just media talk. No, it's the truth. The truth hurts. You want to keep truth. spinning and spinning and spinning. Fans these yeah. days are more yeah. alert than 10 years ago. Fans was yeah. could watch a game and tell you what tactics has been done. Fans are more in detail now than it used to be. Now, fans will tell you what tactics is going. They will research formations, uh, how many players touch the ball. Fans can do that now. There's so much technology yeah. to find all that out. All that you can't hide yeah. anymore. Nah, mate. It, it, they realize, but they have to keep spinning it to promote, um, uh, protect the, the 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 brand and protect Ole. Mm. You know, yeah. and he can I don't know. Did he? What was his press conference? What did he say? I, I didn't listen to it. Did he say anything? What did he you say? Know, yeah? His press conference. He, you know, the, the guy, the guy doesn't ever say anything inspirational. You know, and even his post analysis of games, Ole's post analysis, he doesn't say anything that make it, that that has any bearing. He says, oh, yeah, you know, uh, we have to score the first goal. Otherwise, there's too much pressure or, uh, you know, we played well. You know, it's a game of two halves. Uh, Fine margins. Atlanta's a strong team. You know, Burnley's a strong team. They're difficult to play against. It's the same old crap that he regurgitates. You know, whereas you listen to an interview by Klopp and Pep, even though Pep's English isn't fantastic, they give you some insight into how they think. Even Brendan mm. Rogers, to mm, shell, mm, mm, they mm. tell you something. They reveal something about their coaching method and style and system they implement. They they tell you. You get little tidbits of information, and you think, "Wow, this is an interesting interview or interesting interesting post match analysis." I've never heard a single interesting soundbite from from Oli. It's just the same old regurgitated rubbish. Oh, fine, yeah, he, he loved that word. Against, fine margins you know, and that nonsense. Fine margins. Yeah, the team played fantastic. You know. It's, it's just so revealing. It's just all there for the whole world to see. Exactly. The, the, the whole world can't just be lying. You, you know, you can't, like I said, today's football analysis by fans is so different from 10 years ago because of the yeah, technology. Yeah. You can't fool yeah. fans anymore. You, you can't. No. They will find the stats for a player, how many yeah. touches. They can find all that. And like, yeah. if you say this guy was good he only he made 25 misplaced passes so you see what I mean we yeah. have the technology now so he, all that BS it don't work well we have a big game on Saturday against uh, mm. Manchester City I see mm-hmm. a draw I don't see three points I, I'll, I'll, I will love three points but I just I don't think it's possible I don't Not think it's possible City. especially if, I, I would have been more positive if it was away than Old Trafford mm. because it seems he said that last season, we missed the fans. Now you have all 75,000 watching you. Yeah. And because of Ronaldo, yeah. tickets are literally unavailable. Everyone, because remember, our, we are older than the new fans now. We saw yeah. Ronaldo 2003 to 2009. Yeah, yeah, These yeah. people yeah. never saw that. They They've see YouTube him, videos. Yeah. So seeing him in person yeah. is like 
it's worth it. I got to watch him play for Manchester United. So it's, they, it's like it's like a it's like a comeback tour, isn't it? Yeah, it's like <laughs> it's like a comeback tour. People are flying out. I know I know United have always had fans of I know fans who fly out from America, fly out from Asia yeah. to go to Old Trafford to go watch again because really? of Ronaldo. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That is how much they want to see this guy play. And now mm-hmm. you're saying, what's the excuse now? You have fans in the stadium now, uh, you're still underperforming. Now there's even more pressure because people can see you live now. You're not in an empty mm. stadium. Mm-hmm. So he's, he's got the whole stadium behind him yeah. know, to carry that team forward. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even the fans are singing Ollie at the wheel. I don't know why they're singing that. Maybe they just want to try and lift the team and lift yeah. the crowd. They're and maybe, doing their part. They're doing you know, their support part. him. Yeah. Well, they could see. They I mean, could see. They're not blind. They could see when things are poor. They could see how Villa outplayed us. They could see how Everton outplayed us. Mm. They could see that it's mm-hmm. taking Ronaldo against Villarreal, against Atalanta. Our old Trafford yeah. to constantly keep coming with those last-minute headers and goals to keep United in this Champions League. Take Ronaldo's yeah. Champions League goals away. Take all of all five away in the four games. We'll be out, man. We'll be out. We should be bombing that group right now. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, Atalanta, a small club, smallish club, Villarreal, provincial club, young boys, small club. The easiest we're group the in that league. The easiest group. Easiest in- group. And we are giant. We we're we're worth more than all of them combined. Combined, two threefold. There's no PSG in the group. No. There's no Barcelona. There's no. no like I said, take Villarreal out of the game. Atalanta, young boys in global in European football. They're not exactly the, in the top forty. Let's call it as it is. Yeah, it's not. A but even Villarreal is a, is a is a provincial club though. Yeah, it's a, it's not a it's not a big club. No, not not. Uh, they're still way behind Barca, Real Madrid, and Af- Atletico Real Madrid. They're way behind them three. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. we just okay. So Villarreal, guess how much they're worth? How much? Two hundred million. Two hundred sixty-six million euros. Two six six. Wow. Atalanta, one hundred thirty-nine. Young, Young boys. boys. What's young boys? Have a look. It, What's their club value? Oh, it's not showing their value, but it, it's going to be around the 100, 150 million mark. Yeah, it will be. It and will we're, be. A, we're a four and a half billion giant. Nah, nah. It's just, uh, it's, 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 you see, it doesn't, it doesn't stack up, does it? They it should be. Up. Remember, yesterday, some teams played the fourth games in Champions League. Some teams already solidified qualification. Already done. They're already qualified. United should be at this stage already qualified, not still trying to solidify a place. This is what I'm saying. This yeah. is what I'm saying. Well, we will talk again on. Um, we have a um, a, um, uh, a pre-match game on Sat on Friday and Thursday. We're going to do a pre-match again for, for the Man City pre-match game. Pre-match for the about, City. Yeah, for the okay. City game. We'll let you guys know. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Friday is Friday. Friday evening. Um, yeah, about this UK time. time. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Play time. Okay, I'll be there. So I'll be there. We'll let you know. We'll get all the guys on. Thanks, Tim. Vimal has been an absolute pleasure. Don't forget to say, um, my send my love to my our princess. Tell her Ole, Ole's still there. Ole's still at the wheel. Sorry, Sienna. <laughs> gonna throw her uh, biscuits at me. But uh, Tim, it's, it's it's amazing what you do, man. I just want to thank you. You know this. Thank uh, you, brother. These these Zoom meetings and this this channel that you've got going is brilliant. It's, I really you know? appreciate you, you your contribution. You guys make this channel grow because if I have you guys, there will be no one to, to even talk about to talk with to share the knowledge with and to debate with and to bust our ideas with. Because think about it, I have UK, I have America, I have Australia, I have Africa. The different time zones intertwine ain't easy, but you guys make it easy by always trying to turn up. And I appreciate it. So thank you guys. You know. I thank really you, appreciate man. it. And yeah. your, your princess, tell her, I thank her for letting daddy give it, uh, uh, taking out of daddy's playtime to let you come on the show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, bro. I'll, I'll catch you this week. Thanks, Tim. All right. Take, take care. care. God yeah. bless. Take care, mate. Thank you, my right. friend. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.